you think will be the first place that you'll go once lockdown? <laughs> Another delivery. Another Uber heat. <laughs> Hi. Hi, 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 Noella, Elizabeth Pitt. How is everyone? We're good, I'm good. I'm very well. I'm good. I'm going a little bit stir crazy in lockdown, but I'm excited about some food with you ladies. <laughs> Absolutely. So I couldn't agree more. Um, so for those of you just joining us, I am Jess and I'm the beauty director at Vogue. And you are joining us for our virtual supper club in partnership with Uber Eats. I am joined by the fabulous Pippa Vosper who is a writer and a Hi. presenter. I've got Noella Casares, who's the founder of a charity called Malaika. And I've got the amazing author and podcaster, Elizabeth Day of How to Fail Fame. Because we've all ordered from Uber Eats today. Um, what's everyone got in front of them? Well, I ordered sushi because there's been no sushi restaurants open until about a week ago. This is my return to sushi moment. And um, I ordered from a place that we go to as a family, and this time they're gonna come, they came to me, so it's Eat Tokyo. And um, yeah, it was just a nice treat to have sushi after all these months now of being denied. And what do you have, Elizabeth? I, I feel like Pippa and I are the same person because I've also <laughs> ordered sushi and I've been massively craving it. It's so interesting the things that you crave, isn't it, when you're denied them. So I ordered from Sushi Zone in Vauxhall to try it out and I've already snuck a piece of it and it's delicious. <laughs> Brilliant. And what about you, Noella? In Maria, there's not a lot of restaurants open, so I find a, a nice Greek restaurant, so Falafel King. So I have some nice salad, uh, some nice raw wrap, and uh, and chicken grill. So it's very yummy, and um, I'm half Cypriot Greek, so it's very. I love to have my Greek food once a week. Delicious. Um, and then I have I've kind of gone for something that. Um, my kids would definitely refuse to eat, which is a kale salad. And then I have balanced it out with some chocolate chip cookies. Um, and it's from a place not far from me in Notting Hill. It's called Pharmacy and it's a vegan place. And I'm, I'm not vegan, but I just love the ambiance there. And I kind of miss that. So the next best thing is to, um, to have the food delivered home. So I've got that tonight. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but I'm so over cooking. I'm actually delighted to have had the food delivered to the door. I'm very lucky in that my other half loves cooking. And so he's wow. been doing most of it of his own free will. Um, but it does mean that I get the rum end of the deal and I have to do all the clearing up. And I hate to generalize by gender, she said about to generalize by gender. But I do find that men when they cook tend to use every single implement in the kitchen. Agree, I agree with this. Thank you. Women are a lot neater and I like, I clean up as I go. Anyway, um, but I'm very grateful that I haven't had to do that much cooking, to be honest. Where I feel like I'm just literally, it's just one thing after the other and got kids at different ages. And then so like the, my baby's eating at one point and then before my son went back to school, he was having his lunch and then I was having my lunch. And then it's just, I feel like it's just a constant stream of meals. So tonight everyone is out. I'm having my little treat to sell. And this is kind of like, this is, I think this is what they call self-care maybe. So how have you guys been managing being in lockdown and managing not leaving the house and what are your kind of coping mechanisms, I suppose? I've basically instituted a kind of routine. So I'm lucky in that I work from home normally. So it hasn't been that big a gear shift for me, but I think the key for working from home is to get out of bed and get dressed <laughs> because I don't have children. So I, I, otherwise I have no motivation in a sense to, to actually make an effort. Who have you missed the most being in lockdown? Like what, you know, out of your family and your relationships, like who are you missing the most that's not in your immediate family? Um, I, do miss the, um, I do miss the personal contact of seeing my friends, of, um, of traveling, just taking the train, uh, to, to go to a restaurant, have a nice meal and, and just hugging. I think even, I feel when you see people now, it's like you cannot shake hands, you cannot hug. I think that's it, isn't it? It's all the small things that you kind of take for granted that you can just get on a plane or give someone a hug. 
like that's just kind of all been taken away like Pip you were nodding quite furiously when Noella was talking how how are you finding it who are you missing well I'm super social and I just miss my girls I miss my girlfriends I haven't been great at zoom calls I've been better at sitting at home at night on the phone I've really enjoyed the you know when you were in your 20s and you were single and maybe you weren't single but I was always single in my 20s and you used to sit at home in your little flat and call your girls at night and just spend hours drinking and calling your girlfriends so I've done that a lot and that's felt very like going back to my youth if you like um yeah. I've really enjoyed that but I, I now want to go out and have cocktails and dinner and people watch and laugh and be free again. I just cannot wait, like the other women said, just to go out and go to, I mean, go to a meeting. <laughs> I used to hate meetings, but now I'm like, please let me go to a meeting in a cafe and a yoga class just with other people. It's just, yeah, I'm really missing that. We had our parents come over and we sat in the garden, but even that was just so weird because it's like four chairs, you know, like at the far end of, of the garden and there was kind of like half shouting at each other trying to have a conversation and it just feels it feels so strange but I just love how we're all having to think of different ways to connect. Noella can you tell us a bit about your charity because um, I'd love to know how they're kind of getting on there and how you're keeping in contact with them. So I created Malaika in 2007 so it's been 13 years so it's an ecosystem uh, village in the southern east of the Congo, that uh, the model we created can be duplicated anywhere in any communities uh, all over the world. We built and uh, lead a school for girls. We have uh, 346 students. We started only with three classrooms. Now we have 12 classrooms. We started with 104 girls. Now we have 346 girls. They arrive at five years old until 18 years old. They have breakfast, they have lunch, coding, STEM, sport activity, art, music. And 600 meters of the school, we have a community center where we impact 5,000 people a year. The youth, the mothers, the fathers, where we teach them about entrepreneurship, how to read, because the literacy rate is maybe only 10% in the village. And we have our own agriculture field where we grow the food and it goes to the canteen of the school and where we teach about organic farming to the community and the youth. And with the crisis of the virus, we've been, uh, all the food that we've been growing, we've been giving to the community. And so is your way of keeping in touch with everyone just literally on your WhatsApp and... On WhatsApp, we're using this time to train our teachers, to do training teachers, to, to, um, to have management uh, meeting. So it's been tough because all the donations are down in, for every charities in the world. So um, we're trying to keep positive and um, once in a while the girls they come to the school and they, they call me and it's, um, it's ma they call me Mama Noela. They say, Noela, Mama Noela, we got Ebola, we got the war in the country, we got the election. So another crisis, we are resilient, we just want everything to be, to be open. First of all, I'm so embarrassed that I have to go after Noella. I just, I'm so impressed with everything you do. That's just amazing. I'm just, I'm gonna talk about recording a podcast. <laughs> but yeah, so basically with the podcast that I do, How To Fail, I, normally people come to my house or I go to theirs and obviously that's changed. So now we do it remotely and we do, we do it audio only so that there's a higher audio quality. And to begin with, I was a bit worried about that because the nature of my podcast is that people come on ready to be intimate and to share some of their vulnerabilities because I ask everyone to come up with three times that they failed in their life and, and then we discuss that and what they learned from it, if anything. And, um, and I was worried that not having the face to face contact would change that space. But actually having audio only, I think has been great because it's made it even more confessional because yeah. people are talking from the comfort of their own home. They don't have to get out of their pajamas if they don't want to. And, and I've really loved that different kind of vibe. So that's worked really well. And then in terms of creativity, I'm also, I've, I've been writing a book which is coming out in October called Philosophy, which ironically is about, it's a handbook about what to do when things go wrong. So there's no better time to write it. better timing. <laughs> but I did genuinely, I kind of struggled with getting into the writing again because normally I write in cafes and there's something about the murmur of other people's voices that I find really calming and helpful um, and it took me a while to crack it but what I've now done 
is I go to YouTube and I download um, coffee shop ambient noises. <laughs> And I play that in the background and I have a mug of green tea and I close the door and I put my phone on airplane mode and I cannot tell you how helpful that has been. It is honestly transformed. That is so good. I'm finding exactly the same because I'm used to being in an office and writing and you have the hub and the, you kind of feed off of any, everyone else's energy and to kind of be at home in silence, like I find, I find silence quite deafening actually. Like I find it distracting. Yeah. Um, so that is an amazing tip. I think we all agree that one of the positives of lockdown is that we are all operating at this slower pace, which is so good for us, like mentally, physically, emotionally, but like, how are we going to maintain that? Cause that's something that I'm starting to think about is how to not get into that habit of having the diary packed from like, it's new learning to, to say no. I thought about this a lot actually. And it's, it's learning just to say no, like, is that going to benefit my life? Not in like a, a progress way, but in an emotional way. And would I rather just sit in my sweatpants watching Netflix than go to this party that might lead to this, that might lead to that, that might lead to that? And if the answer is my gut tells me I wanna sit down and I don't wanna to have to go and socialize tonight or feel like I'm missing out because something there might lead to something there, you know, I think it's about listening to what we actually want to do. Could not agree more. And you're really speaking my kind of language. And the, and the thing that lockdown has made very clear to me is who I want to see and who I find nurturing and energising and who I don't through no fault of their own. It's, it's some sort of chemical dynamic and it's made it super clear to me. Amen to all of the above. <laughs> what about you, Noella? I think I definitely want a, a pace of life um, slower. I think the amount of time I was traveling and just looking at my agenda, I have to close my eyes. It was so packed and so many meetings and people and things that I have to do and conference I have to speak. And yeah, and it's the same for our kids. Our kids' agenda is overpacked with the sport activities, with the birthdays and we, the weekend, we are the taxi driver driving them everywhere. And they enjoy too to be, uh, to, to live a pace where it's, it's quiet, it's calmer, where they just want at the end of the time, they want to spend time with their, with their, their mum and their dad. I didn't take a bath for many, many years. And every Saturday morning, I have a bath now with my daughter. My daughter, she said, let's have a girl's time, mommy. And we put the candle and we put the music and we, we have one hour in the bath. And she said, mom, it's great. You don't have to go anywhere. And hearing from your kids too, you don't have to go anywhere. It's, it's make you think really that, yes, actually I don't have to go anywhere and I don't want to go to so many places like before. That is yeah. so lovely and so beautiful. Yeah, I think just having a bit, like, like you say, just a bit of time for self, it's, um, it's almost like we have to safeguard that now go, coming out of lockdown. It's just yeah. almost put up a bit of a fence. Well, thank you so much for joining me, ladies. I only wish it could be in person and I hope that next time we all get to see each other it will be in person because um, I know that's uh, we can't hope for much more than that um, but yes thank you so much for joining me hope you all enjoyed your food is everyone feeling satiated loved it yeah su <laughs> the sushi by you Elizabeth has it got the seal of approval I will be reordering this sushi I will, I will also be going to that restaurant when I'm able to it was delicious I would like another bottle of wine. I'll do that by myself when we all log off. And let's do that more often, virtual or real life. And Jessica, you have to give us a lot of tips in beauty too. Oh, I mean, I that's a whole other conversation, but trust me, I'm here for you in all of your beauty needs. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for joining me tonight, ladies. Um, go back to your lovely families. Have a lovely evening um, and we'll see you thank again you. soon. See you in person thank soon, I really so hope. Much. Thank you. See you soon, everybody. Bye. Bye. Lots of love.